everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video I'm going to be uh, reviewing this book called um, Naming Adult Autism, Culture, Science and I Culture, Science, Identity and it's by a man called James McGrath. And James McGrath is an autistic academic. Um, he's senior lecturer in Literature and Cultural Studies at Leeds Beckett University. And it says, just to read you a bit on the back, it just says, Naming Adult Autism, Culture, Science, Identity is one of the first critiques of cultural and medical narratives of autism to be authored by an adult diagnosed with this condition. James McGrath demonstrates how pejorative narrative, including diagnostic labels, has defined how society regards autism. We learn how experts have constructed autism discourse with little reference to those experiencing it and how this leads to their lack of agency. His excellent book rephrases autism as as his excellent book rephrases, rephrases autism as an impairment to a lifelong identity providing a deeper understanding of it. And that's by Rachel Forrester Jones, Professor in Social Inclusion and Director of the Tizard Centre at University of Kent. And then it's got further problems, so I won't go into that now. But um I thought that this book, um, I really enjoyed reading it. Uh, it's one of the best books on autism I've actually read. It is, however, very expensive. Um, I'm not sure if they sell it at the library. But I'm glad I bought it because um, it, it, it was really interesting and it's like a useful reference to, um, how, to like, it's a useful reference to autism literature. Um, so... Yeah, so, so James Van Bath, he, he kind of really kind of, he really criticises the way uh, autism has been traditionally um, represented uh, in, in narrative, which is his sort of specialism, and uh, the, the sort of misleading implication perpetrated by many of the literary fictions is that autism is a condition diagnosable merely by a novelty tick list of quirks, and, and at any significant impairment caused is unrecognised, that much of the literature, in other words, represents autism not as a disability, but as a mere spectacle. And yeah, and I thought that was really interesting, because that is, um, I've noticed that, this sort of trend as well, um, that how often what we see in literature and on film and in the media is a very sanitised um, version of autism, uh, which does overlook um, the sort of intricacies and complexities of, of the disability, which is often hidden because, you know, autism is, after all, for many people, a hidden disability. In other words, it's not necessarily the actual dis disabling aspects are not always uh, immediately apparent um, when someone encounters a person with autism. Um, so what you see on the screen is, is often this very sort of sanitised um, picture um, just where autism is, is portrayed as being a sort of tick box of quirks, um, quirks that um, get a kind of um, packaged up to make them look um, interesting to uh, to the observer. Um, the other issue that the graph um, talks about is how um, the intense responses to sensory stimuli can be a vital though under-recognised um, the, the intense responses to sensory stimuli can be a vital though under-recognised um, have a vital but under-recognised correspondence with the seemingly unusual or repetitive motor movements uh, for example the so-called um, abnormal quote-unquote habits related to autism in the DSM-5 walking on tiptoe um, so, interestingly, um, I, I do this actually, and, and it's interesting, I share this with James Macbeth, this, um, this trait, um, because James himself, he says how, you know, he, uh, he, um, it rem he says it remains entirely natural for him to walk on toes whenever he's not wearing his shoes, and uh, it has to do with avoiding contact of the heel bones with the floor which even on carpets issues a fog right through his nervous system because he's hypersensitive to it. I thought that's really interesting and as I was reading I was thinking, wow, that's exactly what I experienced. You know like how when you 
like it's really interesting when you're like reading another autistic person describing like exactly the same thing to what you experience and you're like wow someone has just so I'm not the only one who experiences that um yeah and, and again it's interesting you know and he talks about how this links up obviously with a sensory um stimulation you know you get the, int the intense responses to sensory stimulation um how they can bear a vital uh but under recognized correspondence with the seemingly unusual repetitive motor movements um and, and how you know this isn't often portrayed on screen the sort of sensory issues and how they link up with repetitive movements is an un underexplored area of representation of autism but a very real experience by many autistic people because the repetitive behaviors often known as stimming um are usually linked up uh, with the sort of sensory um world how the sensory world is experienced but yeah, with regards to walking on tiptoes, I do exactly the same thing. Um, and of course, I never knew that this was a sensory issue until actually quite recently. Um, I just, you know, I didn't really link it up with sensory issues because I had this kind of, I guess, rather narrow idea of what sensory issues are. And I didn't realise that it included things such as walking on tiptoes. So I just thought it, it was like things such as, you know, the sort of classic five senses, you know, sight, um, taste, smell, t um, sound... Um, but yeah, obviously touch is, is one of those senses and um, walking on tiptoes is, 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 is to do with tactile sensitivity, what it can be. Um, and I, and, I, and, in, and in my case, um, yeah, when I walk on tiptoes, so I walk on tiptoes when I don't wear shoes on, when I don't have shoes on, um, because when I walk with my feet flat on the ground, when I walk with my bare feet flat on the ground, um, either bare feet or, 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 um, or even with socks on, um, I do prefer to walk on tiptoes because... It, it just feels like more secure, more solid. And when I walk with my feet flat on the ground, I sometimes get this sort of tingling sensation. It's worse at, uh, worse at some times than other times. Uh, when I'm feeling very sensitive, it feels it just feels really weird. And the way he described it is exactly what I experienced. Uh, I'm not as bad as I used to be. I can now I can now walk with my feet flat on the ground, whereas when I was younger, it just it just couldn't happen. But I can now do it. But it it still feels a lot easier and a lot less awkward walking on tiptoe um and sometimes i'll just and, and sometimes I'll, like, I'll almost need the input like i'll be banging my feet on the ground to try and get the input and i didn't know this was a sensory issue you know it's funny what you don't realize that you do and you don't realize it's connected to your senses but uh, yeah and it's just it's so interesting as i say that he he does exactly the same thing to me it's like wow um and he explained it in exactly the same way as i experienced it you know, that's to do with, that he gets a sort of throbbing sensation, and that's exactly what happens to me, it's a, yeah, it is, it's like a throbbing sensation that you get right through your nervous system, um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's all to do with that hypersensitivity thing, um, so yeah, but this is where, as I say, this is, he says, you know, this sort of thing isn't really often talked about in, in autism literature, or, you know, the sort of media portrayals of autism, like a public view, this sort, this side of autism isn't often portrayed, um, he talks about fiction and autism on page 21 um, and how there's this sort of stereotype that autistics are confused by fiction um, and obviously that's a bit ironic because Cedric James McGrath himself, you know, he um, studies fiction as part of his, uh, um, his career. Um, I do think that this, is, this stereotype does contain a large chunk of truth, however, speaking very personally, in that I do think that because the nature of autism can make it harder for autistic people to understand fiction and I know certainly from my own perspective growing up I did really struggle to understand fiction to understand the plot I, I, I my comprehension for fiction wasn't great but that, but that shouldn't be confused with not enjoying or not appreciating fiction it's often said that autistic people have a kind of preference for fact over fiction and again I think this stereotype does contain a grain of truth and um, for many autistics this will be the case um, but, but again, it's, it's, it's a stereotype. It does contain truth, but it's not the whole story. And it doesn't mean that just because you're autistic that you can't appreciate fiction. And of course, there are many autistic people who do really enjoy fiction. And even some autistics who, who actually specialise in fiction or have it as a special interest. So it is a stereotype, even one that contains a grain of truth. And like I say, although I do, uh, historically, I have preferred fact over fiction. That was more because I didn't really understand the plots of a lot of fiction because of my comprehension problems. But I still could appreciate some fiction. Like, I, I was really into Mallory Towers and Nina Blyton stories um, from the age of 10. 
Um, and, you know, and I enjoyed, my mum used to read me Greek myths and stuff when I went to bed at night. And so, you know, I did enjoy some fiction. It's not the case that just because I had a bias towards facts or struggled to understand fiction, that that meant I didn't like it or, or didn't, wasn't interested in some types of fiction. And now as an adult, um, I am trying to get more into fiction. My comprehension has improved, so I'm getting more into fiction. Um, but yeah, I guess the stereotype that autistics are just like in, really into systematising, and that's what leads them, and this idea that they prefer systematising over fiction. And that they're only interested in STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, maths, which is another major stereotype. Um, and, that this, and that then leads on to this idea, this, this um, the stereotype for arts and humanities, like a province only of non-autistics or NTs, um, which kind of suggests, which in a sense excludes autistics from, the, from the arts and humanities, um, or, or has the propensity for that to happen, for autistics to be... Um, excluded from arts and humanities um, because you know if autistics are set are deemed not to be interested in fiction then you know it doesn't take much then to think that you know they're not going to be able to work in those areas which obviously excludes autistics who do want to work in those areas and is really unfair um, assumptions about stem and autistic talent um, is encoded in the screening questionnaires he mentions which means that some adults are maybe less likely to receive a diagnosis if they read novels because, um, you know, on a Simon Van Cohen screening questionnaire, that's not used to diagnose autism, but it's used to kind of, um, if you like, decide who does get referred for an assessment. Um, quite a few of the questions do ask, you know, are related to the arts and whether or not you're interested in fiction or, or whether or not you like going to theatres and things like that. And actually, if you answer that actually you do enjoy fiction or those things, that then lowers your autism quotient by default which is really unfair for those people who might be, you know, properly autistic, but actually are, are, do express an interest in those areas. Um, and he says, you know, if then, and also the idea that autistics are devoid of imagination, in actual fact it's the social imagination that autistics struggle with, not imagination in a broader sense, but because um, this isn't often emphasised, but it's a social imagination, it's easy then for people to assume that autistics are unimaginative in a sort of broader sense, and then that, he says, he argues, can dehumanise um, is dehumanising. Um, the idea also that autistics are either good at STEM subjects or nothing is sort of false binary, um, which is um, which you see often in the in the media. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to uh, video number two now to carry on this review. So moving on to video number two now.